This is Stunt Race FX, released in 1994, also known as Wild Tracks in Japan, and I think you've got to go pretty deep into Nintendo history to find a first-party Nintendo game more obscure than this one. It is, though, notable for being one of a handful of games blessed with Super FX technology. Yes, it had an extra CPU built into the cartridge dedicated to graphics processing, and that's probably why time hasn't been so kind to this game. It's a full-on 3D polygonal racer and the novelty may have carried it back then, but these days the low frame rate could easily be a deal breaker. It's slow, it's stuttery, it's almost nauseatingly jerky, but despite that I do still sort of like this game. It's got that classic Nintendo polish and attention to detail where could be a good game lurking here, it's just hidden by the appalling frame rate. I have heard though from various sources that this can be improved quite a bit by overclocking the Super FX chip. Maybe squeeze out a few more frames per second and make this game, well, I don't know, less bad and more good. That's the plan and I've found some pretty good info about how I might go about doing this, so let's get to it. But before I do, here is a word from today's sponsor. It's HelloFresh, the home delivery meal kit company. I genuinely love HelloFresh, I'm a huge fan of what they do, the food they offer is delicious and the choice is enormous and the recipes are pretty much foolproof, giving you really good food at home with zero stress. If you're looking to eat less meat or just eat more healthily, HelloFresh can very much help you with that too, with a whole load of exciting options you can tailor to just what you need. If, like me and the wife, you're a bit of a fussy eater, well, that's no problem. I hate raw onion. She is not a big fan of sweet corn, but that's okay. There's so much choice. Finding recipes that we both love is not hard. And, well, you're cooking this stuff. If you want to dial back the garlic or whatever, well, you can do that. I would call HelloFresh a guilty pleasure, but there really is no guilt involved. It's good food and they're an environmentally responsible company. Nearly all their packaging is recyclable. And best of all, they send you just what you need for the recipes. So there is much, much less food waste. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGHF6488 for 65% off and free shipping on your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up your purchases, so go ahead and support this channel, that would be fantastic, and thank you HelloFresh. Okay then, we're back to Stunt Race FX, and this is the game running on the real hardware. Yeah, this is the Japanese version of the game I've got here, it was the cheapest copy of the game that I could find, and well, this might not survive what I'm going to do to it, so I didn't want to spend too much. Apart from the title screen though, and the fact that the speed is in kilometres per hour, I don't think there are any other regional variations to speak of. Now inside this game's cartridge there is a crystal oscillator that sets the clock speed of the Super FX chip. If I bypass this component and replace it with my own faster oscillator, well it should speed up this processor, giving a better frame rate. And actually doing this turned out to be a lot less stressful than I thought it was going to be. I'll spare you the details for now, but it's not a huge job. The stock speed of the Super FX is 21.4-ish megahertz, and I've got a few different oscillators to try out, but I'll start with a safe 27 megahertz. I've heard that that should work. Plugging it in without the shell isn't easy, but anyway, does this work? And yes, it does. That is a good start. I haven't totally killed the game. Let's change the aspect ratio because that annoys me and we'll try the game out. It's working now, but does it stay working? That's got to be the next question. Just because the game boots doesn't mean that it's stable. And no, it's not. Sadly, it does keep crashing, sometimes quite spectacularly. It will run for a minute or two and it does run a bit better. It's got a better frame rate, but it won't stay that way for long. 
This is not good news. Overclocking is apparently pretty hit and miss with these games. And if my copy won't run at 27 megahertz, well, I'm probably going to have to try an even lower speed. And if I go much lower, well, there's not going to be much point in doing this. All is not lost yet, though, because the 27 megahertz oscillator that I've got isn't quite the right type. I had to budge it to make it work, which I'll explain later, but maybe that's actually the problem. So instead of going lower, I might as well try to go higher first with a 30 megahertz oscillator, which is the right sort of component. Does this work? Yes, indeed it does. Does it stay working? Well, actually, it does seem to. This is very promising. In fact, I was able to play this long enough that I can probably call this a success. Does it run better? Well, yes, I would say it really does. It's definitely smoother with a better frame rate. It seems like a pretty solid improvement. In fact, it works so well, I think I'm going to go a stage further and try for 32 megahertz. I might be pushing my luck, but why not? Will this boot? Yes, it does. Is it stable? Uh, no, it's not, sadly. It runs just long enough that I was really starting to get my hopes up. It didn't crash within a minute or two, like 27 megahertz, and I was actually able to get pretty deep into the novice racing championship, but it never lasted. The improvement at 32 megahertz is pretty noticeable, and it does come pretty tantalizingly close to working, but it's just not there. I did try to mess around with the wiring that I used to connect the oscillator. I connected the output pin directly to the point on the cartridge board that it needs to be connected to, hoping that it would improve things. There's all kinds of stuff going on with high frequency signals like these, capacitance, impedance, RF interference, stuff that I don't really understand. But well, this didn't help, it didn't make it stable. I can't say that I'm massively surprised though, from what I've read, it seems like 30 megahertz is as good as you're going to get in this game. But at this point, whilst I'm here, I'm curious to try out this overclocking on another Super FX game, Star Fox. Wiring this up is dead easy, it doesn't have its own oscillator on the board, doesn't this game? It uses a signal from the Super NES itself, connected via what I think is an RF choke, so I'll just be disconnecting that and wiring in my own oscillator, that should do the job. So let's try 27 megahertz and yeah, it crashes. So I think that oscillator is definitely at fault, let's go on to 30 megahertz. And that works great, actually, a smoother, speedier experience. And so let's go all the way up to 32 megahertz here too. And again, this works great without crashing, though I've got to say I'm not massively surprised. I have heard you can really go to town overclocking this game. The Super FX chip in this game actually only runs at half the base clock speed, so at 32 megahertz, the Super FX is actually only running at 16 megahertz internally. Still, though, it's a boost, but you can go much further. You can even transplant the Star Fox ROM into the Stunt Race FX PCB and enjoy the double speed Super FX that that game uses. That's going to be a project for another day though, but yeah, this works really well on Star Fox 2, but let's get back to the subject at hand. So if 30 megahertz is what it's going to be, let's finalize this mod and fix it permanently into the cartridge. And I might as well go through the whole process now. There's actually not all that much to it. I'll put a link to the very helpful forum thread that I got this info from for a more detailed description if you want it. But it's basically a matter of removing one surface mount resistor and cutting through a trace on the board to disable the stock oscillator that's on there and replacing it it with your own. So this is the 30 megahertz oscillator that I ended up using, a totally standard off-the-shelf 5 volt 4 pin oscillator. 
Not that expensive and not that hard to get hold of either, I got mine on eBay. I ended up attaching it to a piece of strip board, the metal can is of course conductive and I struggled to attach the wires to it without shorting them all out otherwise. It has four pins but there's only three we need to worry about, positive and negative power connection and the oscillator signal out which connects to the board here. You can connect the power wires to many places on the cartridge itself, but the signal one is critical. I tried to keep the wire to the signal short because I thought that might help, but well then it's just a case of fitting everything into the cartridge shell. It turns out this oscillator fits absolutely perfectly just to the side and then it's a case of screwing everything together and we're done. So how much better is this game with an overclocked Super FX chip? Well, objectively there are some definite changes to the way the game plays. Going from 21 MHz to 30 is around a 40% speed boost on the Super FX chip, and this does seem to translate to a higher frame rate. Roughly it goes from less than 10 frames per second to more like 12. Not huge, but still an improvement. It also ups the tempo of the game too. Unlike some overclocks, speeding up the Super FX chip does literally make the game run faster. Well, parts of it anyway. The Super FX stuff is faster, the stuff controlled by other parts of the system remain the same speed, so the music doesn't change for one thing. But on a more subjective note, does this make for a more enjoyable game? Well, I would say that it does. It takes it from being a sort of barely playable historical curiosity to something that's worth spending a bit more time with. The original game was so slow and jerky that at times it was hard to follow what was going on. It now flows quite a bit better. Originally the controls felt vague and disconnected. Now it is a touch sharper. It's still hardly super smooth, but I would say the boost it gets from overclocking puts this over the line of playability. And this game has quite a lot of interesting, innovative ideas in it, and quite a lot of content, which a faster pace helps bring to life. There's some depth to the play mechanics, there's three cars available right away, and they all have very noticeable differences in their handling characteristics. And there's not just accelerate and brake either, but a boost button and a sharp turn or drift available on the shoulder buttons, similar to F-Zero but with more dynamic gravity based physics. The main racing mode is definitely the best of what's on offer with three different cups available and 12 tracks in total. Each one is quite distinctive and unique looking and I do wonder if there was ever a thought to make this a Mario Kart game but they pulled back when it didn't quite shape up. The other modes seem like more of an afterthought, but there's still quite a bit to enjoy, especially the high performance free tracks mode, basically a single player time trial with no opponents and higher frame rates. There's secret stuff to unlock and even a two player mode, which doesn't work quite as well, but hey, they gave it a go. Overclocking this at least to 30 MHz doesn't make this game amazing, but it does make it better. It's not hard to see why the original got forgotten so quickly. It had great reviews when it came out, it was different from almost anything else you could play at home at the time, but this was the cusp of the 32-bit generation, and within a couple of years games like Wipeout and Sega Rally made this seem ridiculously primitive. If the performance had been a bit better, it might have had a longer life, more of a following. The sequel that Nintendo planned but canned might have seen the light of day if there'd been more enthusiasm about it, though I don't suppose it ever would have been as enduring as Nintendo's other first party outputs during this period. It's no Mario Kart, but upping the frame rate does make that Nintendo magic work better. Still though, 30 MHz isn't that much of an overclock, is it really not possible to go any further? Well, from what I've heard, you can go higher on the real hardware, but you need a modified version of the game ROM programmed onto an EEPROM chip, but that's something I'm not set up to do at the moment. If we want to go beyond that right now, it'll have to be emulation, so let's give that a try.
With the Messon S emulator, we can take the Super FX chip all the way to a 900% overclock. That's equivalent to 190 MHz. Looking at how this runs at that level, and it's surprisingly playable. The game does run faster, but not unmanageably so. It's a little bit frantic, but this works quite well, actually. The frame rate is still limited, though. It's nowhere near the Magic 60. It can't even hit 30. It seems to max out at about 20 frames per second, and much of the time it doesn't even hit that. It seems like the game may have some kind of frame rate limitation built in, but that does make sense because there's a big bottleneck between the Super FX chip and the Super NES's graphics chip, the PPU. It doesn't matter how fast the Super FX works, how fast it can draw the 3D graphics, the graphics data it produces still needs to be sent to the PPU for it to be displayed on the screen. This takes time for the data to be copied over, meaning that the frame rate will always be limited. Potentially you could also overclock the main CPU too. This could help with the bottleneck, but in reality it doesn't improve things, it just makes the game run even faster with loads of glitches. To make this game actually run at higher frame rates, it would need to be reprogrammed to take account of the extra processing power. That has been done quite recently with Star Fox, a hacked version from a very talented hacker. Cam 1 2 can hit 30 or even 60 frames per second running on an overclocked emulator. That though sadly doesn't exist for Stunt Race Effect at the moment. Still though, running at a 900% overclock does make this game smoother. Does it make it even better? Well, I think we probably hit diminishing returns long before 900%, but more overclock does make it more better to a point. But that said, unless this game has a total Nintendo reboot, it's never going to be an undying classic. It definitely does improve though, so if you've seen this game, maybe tried it and been put off by the low performance, or maybe give it another go with an overclock. If you've got the capability to do this on the real hardware, it's fun and the mod isn't that difficult, though you will need a bit of soldering experience and a steady hand. But if you just can't be bothered or you haven't got the capability, not all but most of the big Super NES emulators these days do have overclocking features. Usually it's just a case of selecting the right option from the menu and then maybe reloading the game. If you're wondering about that 27 MHz oscillator that I struggled with, well, it was a 3.3 volt component, that was the only one I could find, and the Super NES runs at 5 volts. I tried to make it work by using a voltage divider, a simple circuit with two resistors. I'd heard that could work, but it didn't. I should have used a voltage regulator, they aren't hard to find or expensive, and that's what I would have done if my 30 MHz oscillator didn't work so well. And maybe it was something else entirely. If you know any better, well, let me know in the comments. So that was a fun diversion, but time to say goodbye, I think. I should probably say thank you to Thunderblaze16 and all the other people on the Sega16 forums who put up some very good info about how to do this mod. The thread is from years ago, but this if this ever reaches your ears, well, thank you for all that info. And thank you, as always, to my wonderful Patreons. If you would like to join them, there is a link below. And also, if you're still watching and you haven't already, Already, now would be a great time to subscribe to my channel and maybe even hit that like button too. That would be fantastic. So thanks for watching and I'll say goodbye.